Our Father, which are in heaven, the prayer that we learned since we are little children. I, this is my testimony. That's the first prayer that I have learned from my mom. I, I didn't, I remember since. And I taught my children and many other people. And we pray together. We pray in a secret prayer. And this is like a basic prayer that prayer of, um, gratefulness, thankfulness, and adoration to our Lord and our Creator. My dear brethren and sisters, children, youth, everyone who came here to this meeting, at this day, very special day, it's a Sabbath day, that's what makes special, and the more special is, because God promised that He will pre- be present, and He is present, and He prepared for us double portion of His blessings. I'm very blessed, even for this past week, I didn't have a chance to speak on our pre- uh, Thanksgivings, but uh, I had an opportunity to spend time with two groups of young uh, people. I really like talk to young people, in a sense they are so open, they are not making up things, Oh, they try to cheat you a little bit if they don't know the exact answer, but in general, they're very sincere and they're innocent in their way. And I feel like great responsibility in the sense that you hold in a clay and you can build anything out of that clay. Parents, I really encourage you to pay attention to your children and spend time as much as you can now. Otherwise, it would be too late for you to change anything while they are uh, growing. Last study, last study, we, can anybody help me? What was our last study about? I haven't seen, I haven't seen you for two weeks already. Two weeks ago. That was not me. That was not me. That was not me. In the school of Jesus. In the school of Jesus. We've been talking how it's important to sign up for a class and study with Jesus. We've also been studying that uh, once you sign up, you will never graduate. And you have to continue to grow in this education. And Jesus will reveal to you new and new horizon that you never knew. Ask and shall be given to you. God definitely prepared. We also read the statement from Ellen G. White that she said that we have to learn many things and we have to all unlearn many things. That's why we're coming to school. We have to unlearn and learn at the same time in order to be accepted by God. God is molding us, shaping us, sending people across our path that we don't like much, but they are there for some reason. The events happens in our life that we don't like it either. Some we do, some we don't. We have to deal with that. You cannot quit job just because somebody says something not pleasant to you. You have to deal with that because otherwise, how else you will survive? Today, I would like to take you further. And our subject for our study would be today about commitment. I have this definition by dictionary. It says the state of quality of being dedicated to a cause, activity, etc. The company commitment to quality, for example. Synonyms, dedication, devotion, allegiance, loyalty, faithfulness, fidelity. Uh, Another way to explain it, in engagement or obligation that restrict freedom of action, business commitment, synonyms, responsibility, obligation, duty, tie, and liability. Brethren, I know that we don't, we want freedom, okay? And we kind of have a not quite right understand of freedom. Freedom is not permissiveness. Uh, John 8, 32, and you will know the Truth and truth will make you free. Only to know the the real stuff, you will be free. I was talking to someone this week or last week about the how people are uh, addicted to things. They like to eat, they like to drink, and they like to smoke and take. And we are free. We, we literally we are very blessed because we are free of all those things that these many people uh, outside of this room uh, they are addicted to. And uh, the same chapter eight of John verse thirty six says, "If the Son will make you free, you will be free indeed." My dear brothers and sisters, God makes you free, made you free, and He wants you to stay 
three. Talking back about the uh, the commitment, people uh, line up to sign the uh, marriage certificate for to to get married, and the same a bunch of people at the same time they signing a paper for divorce. The one uh, wanted to marry it, one say, no, 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 I don't want this marriage anymore. For those who are married, uh, I do believe, or been married, I believe you, you remember some of the words that you say at the day of your marriage. I'd like to refresh your mind and just to have, a, that you will have clear understanding about this. It's typical. I'm not saying exactly the words that you repeated in your time. It goes like this. The priest, the, the pastor will ask, will you have this woman to be your wife to live together in a holy marriage will you love her comfort her honor keep her in sickness in health and forsaking all others uh, be faithful to her as long as you both shall live nice words no perfect perfect and you say i do once you say i do you legally marry let, let me continue reading when the the man goes on and he gives his part. In the name of God, for example, I, John, take you, say Mary, to be my wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and cherish until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. I mean... Similar things we do when we become Christians, when we become uh, members of the church. God requires commitment. Let me take you, let me ask you another question. Can Christian be non-committed? That's like oxymoron. If you are Christian, you're already committed. But we want to be a Christian with very little or no commitment. How that works? Brethren, that doesn't work. That's oxymoron, as I said it already. The employer who are looking for a um, worker for their business, they're looking for committed people, the devoted people who would really bring some difference in their business, in their company. They ask their questions about their background, what you like, what you don't like. And not only that, they give them some bonuses like the health insurance, vacation, you name it. There are so many things that employer wants to keep their good workers and have a good result feel make them feel good about themselves about their family and make company prosper so does god does god did god give us promises Amen. i would like us to go and to book of exodus exodus chapter 19 verse 3 and moses went up unto god and the lord called upon him unto him out of the mount saying thus Shall thou say to the house of Jacob and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto Egyptian, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my, my covenant, then it shall be a peculiar cre uh, treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. God making promise. No, he said, I brought you out of Egypt. I did this to you. And I'll, I'll promise you even more. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. There are words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came, came to the children and elders of the people, laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. And verse 8 is very important for us to learn and understand. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord had spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people to the Lord. There was the first covenant that God made with his people. And he promised them and they promised. Yes, we'll do. We know what happened a few days later, no? We know. We know exactly what happened then. They say, no, 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 no. Something happened with that man. Let us build the, the um, idol and carve and go back to Egypt. And we like the way how it was. So sorry, brethren, but we, that's what happened today to many of us as a Christian. We made promises and we changed our mind. We said, no, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to continue the same way. 
and uh, we read some amazing things, some amazing uh, people in the Bible. Sometimes it's hard to grasp that these were real people. We thought, oh, the Job, he was superhero. Oh, Moses, he was something. No, brother, they were just like you and me. They're nothing, they're nothing special. All what they have special, and that um, they're putting their faith into practice. That's the basic thing. What they, what make them so special? This day with God, page one twenty eight. Alan G. White says, beginning with a full surrender. That's what it requires, and continuing in the simplicity of obedience to the Lord's commandments according to His special direction. Not your direction, his special direction. None of the important things specified in his word are to be neglected. Commitment. I cannot commit to my wife uh, like half of them. Just, just half. I commit myself for 50%. No, that doesn't work like that. She wants the full commitment. And so the same, I am expecting the same thing. God expecting from us full commitment. Commitment uh, without the um, plans and action is like a hope and promises. It's just the hope and promises. If you're not implementing, if you have plan and you're not practicing, that doesn't doesn't work for you. And um, Jesus Christ uh, answering the question: What should I do for uh, to inherit the eternal life? Luke chapter ten, verse twenty-seven. You shall love the Lord your God with all thy heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbors as yourself. And your neighbors as... Does it, does it, does it sound familiar what just Brennan read for us from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5? And thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God, with thine heart, with all thy soul with all thy might. Total surrender. Total uh, full commitment. I'd like us to study a story of um, the life of Peter. I know that there are so many times we talk about this man. He was a zealous man. He did this. He did this. And all of that is right. But I would like to st study today about how he began his uh, mission, how he start following Christ. And that is uh, written in John chapter 1. Chapter 1. John chapter 1 verses 40 to 42. First encounter of Peter with Jesus. How did they met and what was happening at that time? One of the two which heard John speak and follow him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found that his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Verse 42, John 1. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus behold him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation, a stone. Andrew was a very dedicated person. And he didn't sit down, sit back, cross his arm and look, just enjoy himself. He went and looked for someone else. He found Peter and brought him to Christ. Peter, once he came, he listened, he heard a testimony about him. And what after that Peter do? What did he do after that? He went back. No, no, Peter. I'm talking about the Peter. Andrew brought Peter. And uh, P Peter went back fishing. He didn't stay right as Andrew once he accepted. Peter heard it. Listen. He liked it. He said, there's nothing bad. He's nothing bad. He's nothing bad. He's a good preacher. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good preacher. And he went back. So, doesn't sound familiar to us. I'm okay. I'm good. Yeah. Was the last, was a good sermon. Was a good sermon. What else? I mean, what, what did we study last, um, two weeks ago about the faith? If it's not the, the word of the Lord, if not mixed with faith, 
does not bring you, does not profit you. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 2. If the word of God is not mixed with faith in your heart, does not profit you. You have to digest, you have to taste it, you have to eat it. Sometimes it's bitter, sometimes it's sweet. Talking back about Peter, he went, he went back. Peter represents a big number of Christians. We say, I like it, but I am too busy to commit myself to this. I cannot do it for right now. And we have all their I mean, reasonable excuses. Someone is invited in the church for, to take a responsibility. For example, to be a missionary leader. We say, no, it requires time. I have to chase people. I have to call them. I have to, no, I'm, I'm working. I cannot do it. And I heard it. Did you? Maybe you're the one who said it. No, I cannot take that responsibility. Too much. What you mean too much? Too much you receive blessing from God or too much to give back? I, I don't know. What is it? What's, what's your point? Do you see yourself as God sees you? That's the problem. The easiest things to do is nothing. Just sit back and enjoy. Peter left. So many of us are leaving. When we hear the call, when we see the opportunity, we say, no, I can't. I can't. No, I'm, I, it's not for me. I have family. I have work. I have many other things. I would not have time for myself. Sometimes we are way too easily satisfied with the mediocrity of our faith. We are satisfied with being a casual Christian in the name only. We are satisfied with the lack of commitment, without the excitement, without the zeal. We are sometimes content to be uninvolved or lukewarm. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 through 17. Lukewarm. By whom Jesus says, I will spit you out of my mouth. I hope today we can change our mind, change our um, attitude and see ourselves the way how God sees you. Apostle Paul, when he dedicated the young man Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 5, he gave him several certain instruction and encouragement. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 through 5. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the thing that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. In other words, what Paul says, look, everything which you lend to me, pass down to someone else. That, that's, that, that was the bottom line. That was the instruction. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that watereth, uh, sorry, watereth, uh, entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. And if any, if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crown except he strive lawfully i have three points to discuss today uh, to break this down and to for us easy to understand uh, number one dedication or commitment i cannot put in the same although these a little bit two different words but they have the same final goal you have to dedicate yourself and commit yourself uh, number one Put God first. Anything which you do. Point number one in your walk toward heaven. Otherwise you will walk forever and never reach there. First, put God first. Remember what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 and 5. Thou shalt love thy God with how much of thy heart? All thy heart. All means A-L-L. All. There is no exceptions or anything any reserve that you leave for yourself we like to keep some reserve for ourselves no i do but i still have something for myself continue on reading and with all thy soul with your uh with, you have to dedicate all your uh, faithfully uh, 
and with all thy might, with all thy strength, with all your possession, with your emotions, your intellect, your knowledge, completely dedicated soldiers. Otherwise, God cannot rely on you. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Galatians 6, 7. I want to sow, Ellen G. White, she talks about herself, for time and eternity. My heart hungers and thirsts after righteousness. I want my life hid in Christ Jesus, that my sowing shall bring me the right kind of harvest. I feel deeply in regard to my own self for every day, in words or in action. I am sowing either tares or wheat. I want to sow for time and eternity. I have lived nearly the period of my allotted time and what shall the harvest be? Ask yourself this question. What my harvest will be? What did I sow in my life? What kind of seeds did I sow? What do people here see in me? Began with my family, with my neighbors, my co-workers, my church people. What do they see in me? Am I a zealous um, missionary for Christ or I'm just believing for myself. Remember, we make this, uh, we establish that Christian cannot be uh, not committed. Or, or, or if you're a Christian, by default, you have to be committed. I want a quiet and unwavering trust in Most High. I have experienced His protecting care in a remarkable manner when following in the part of duty and so on. I believe we all have this experience when we went through life especially those who have some experience with the Lord, we can look back and say, wow, that was, that was awesome. The way how God did in my life it was unbelievable how God steered and brought me up to this point. Brethren, in order for you to say that, you really have to cooperate. Remember, the, the, the walking with Christ is a relationship. It's like marriage. You can be, you cannot be in married, married and not committed to each other. You have to have a relationship, exchange, uh, encourage, rebuke if you need to. Every moment of time is precious and weighty with eternal consequence. We are in the world of appearance which mock and deceive like the uh, apples of Sodom. Oh, there are so many apples of Sodom around us. They're so attractive. Just when you turn your whatever gadget you have, it's, it's there. The benediction is pronounced upon all who love and obey God. The words are positive, but mark their significance. The Alpha and Omega does not utter words that will lead any soul to suppose that a profession, profession of faith without willing genuine love and obedience will secure to him the entrance into the holy city and right to the tree of life. There is no such a way. You have to fully surrender yourself. That's only after that you will have a right to the tree of life. You will be have a right to go through the uh, pearl gates. What are the qualifications of our uh, of our citizens? Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Revelation 22, 14. That was taking all from the same scripture, 14 MR, 80, page 89 and 90. That was point number one, full surrender, total surrender. Dedicate your heart according to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5. Number two, in order for us to move in our spiritual growth, we are... We, we have to commit ourselves, but it cannot be made by force. You have to freely choose and, and follow Christ. That's number two. Yes, that's point number two. That's point number two. Free will choice. Don't force yourself. Don't make yourself. You, I have to, I have to do this. First, you have to Really dedicate yourself, fell in love. Let's go to Romans, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Paul says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies 
a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God wants your reasonable service. Not uh, automatic. It's like you on, on some kind of remote, somebody is steering you. You have to come with a full conscience that that's, that's my life, that's my salvation. You know, when we are hungry, it's automatically come a, a desire. We're looking for something to eat. When we're thirsty, the same thing. So, the same, the same thing in our spiritual growth. In the ancient Jewish service, it was required that every sacrifice should be without blemish. In the text, we are told to present our body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, and it's our reasonable service. We are God's workmanship. The uh, Psalms meditating upon the marvelous work of God in the human frame exclaim, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139.14 We can understand the value of the human soul only as we realize the greatness of the sacrifice made for its redemption. The word of God declares that we are not our own, that we are bought with a price. Okay. We have, we can understand the value of human soul only, uh, once we realize how much heaven paid for us. Sometimes you have uh, items in your home and if you are not uh, experts, you don't know how much that picture maybe has a value. But if somebody comes and says, wow, did you know this cost thousands of dollars? But you did not know that. So, if you did not know until today that your soul cost heaven immense amount, there is no, no zeros for that. The heaven gave best what heaven had, Jesus Christ. Imagine how much your soul now um, has a value. You are very precious, my dear brother. Do, don't, don't just give yourself to Satan for service. Don't neglect your duty thinking somehow you will sneak to the gate, uh, to the pearl gate. That's not going to happen. Full commitment or nothing. Matthew, uh, point number three, point number three is three points. Submitting your, your will to the will of God. Matthew 9.9 9 was another man whom Jesus met. He became his disciples as well. And as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the, uh, at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he arose and followed him. Was there any discussion between Jesus and Matthew? No. no, no. Literally what Jesus said, Matthew, what you're doing, you're cheating people. You should stop doing that. And he didn't ask for a second question. He didn't ask, let me think about that. That's a common answer. There's so many people, they're walking around, around Jesus, jumping a little bit in different direction. There, there's, there was a crowd of people and only one lady who touched his garment with faith and he got healed. One lady out of hundreds who was surrounding him. There's so many people talking about Christ, but without full surrender, nothing. Point number three, submitting your will to the will of God. Matthew, accept God's invitation. He said, I'm willing to go, Lord, as far as you lead me. That would be the best answer of yours or mine. I do believe it's not that easy for us because we have so many things that we get used to do it and they are kind of in our blood already. The tendency inherited uh, uh, that we develop here and it's hard for us to give up everything at once. But Jesus Christ he came for specifically for this purpose, to change. And John 3, 
chapter 3 and a conversation with Nicodemus, Jesus says, you must be born again. Amen. You have to come as a new one. Forget all your degrees, all your knowledge, all your skills, what you have had before. And don't rely that, oh, I know. That's what people of Israel, they say, oh, we are children of Abraham. We have nothing to do with the slavery. Oh, if you would be a child of children of Abraham, you would know who I am. That basically what, what people of Israel, they reject that present truth. And present truth today is, brethren, to, to leave aside everything and say, yes, Lord, and follow him and preach the gospel and first fix your life, make a um, covenant with the Lord and uh, tell everybody else who, with whom you meet. Why did the inhabitants of Noatic world know not the day of their visitation? That's what Jesus continued on. Satan is working with the untiring energy to bring in every conceivable error to the engross the mind of man and woman so that they shall not give heed to the warnings of God. As in the day of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For us in the day they were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered in the ark. For they knew not until the flood came. What did they know? What, what, what was the problem? Did they know that the flood is coming? What was, did Noah, did Noah build the ark in a secret place or what? It was an open place. Why why Bible says that they know not? They didn't believe. They didn't believe. They didn't take that knowledge and mixed with faith. They believed that Noah somehow a little bit, he's losing his mind. He built the ark on the dry land. Uh, there was no concept, was no concept about rain. We know today it's easy for us to convince the flood because we have flood almost every uh, here and there in our basements. We know what's that. <laughs> and um, it's not a problem. But for them, it was impossible. So, today, what is difficult part for you today? Let, let's just move to our time. We are feeling so comfortable in this life. Driving good cars, having good phones, having warm houses, if it's near the air conditioning in the summertime, we feel cozy. And we don't want to step out of our comfort zone because that would cause us some, some inconveniences. We believe by doing everything without stepping out of our comfort zone, we somehow we will get in the right place. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, brethren. You have to, we have to commit ourselves completely. Uh, continue reading Amen. this. I'm reading from book 19, um, MR, page 386. Why did inhabitants of the Noatic world know not the day of their visitation? Because they did not have warnings? No, but because they did not heed the message God sent them through Noah, Genesis 6, 5, 7, 11, 13. God gave directions to Noah to build the ark on dry land and warn the, pe warn the people. Noah gave the message of the Lord to the large population upon the earth. He gave it by voice and then showed his faith by his work in building the ark. God gave him exact direction for building his ark. And you, my dear brother and sister, you have direct, exact direction from your Lord how to do things. Uh, there is a steps in our, in our faith that we have to follow. I will need that for now. And, um, let's back, go back to Peter. Let's go back to Peter. We've, we've learned that he was uh, heard. He heard from Jesus. Even he heard his name. How he would be called in the future. And he went back again fishing. Let's go back to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. I 
I name it first conversion of Peter. He met Christ, but he was not converted. And now, let's read together. Luke chapter 5, 1 and 8. And it came to pass that as the people passed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two sheep standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered in one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and thought the people out of the ship. I was, he used the vessel that Peter had for missionary purposes. The lesson is, whatever you have belongs to God. Your car, your phone, anything that you have, house, has to work for one purpose, one only. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Lunch out into the deep and let down your nets for drought. And Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break, and they beckoned, and their partners, which were in the other ship, and that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ship, so that they began to sing. And what happened then? Verse 8. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at, at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. First meeting with Jesus. Good, good preacher, good preacher. And he walked away. Well, what happened the second time? I want us to talk more about this. And the Peter did not catch any fish. The Lord came and solved his problem. When you're walking without Christ, my dear brother and sister, you can try, you can work, you can toil whole night, whole month, whole week, whole, uh, whole year and years and years. You will be working for a pocket with a holes. First, what you have to do, you have to dedicate your life to Christ, who definitely will supply your needs, but not your greeds. Once you do that, and be faithful in tithes and offering and everything else, God definitely will make a difference. God is solving our problem. And there are many. There are many. And He is able to do that. That's not a problem for me, for Him. Peter could just shake his hand and say, Thank you, Jesus. You helped me. Now I have enough to supply, to, to support my family. He could do that, no? He could do that and walk away again. But Peter didn't. Peter didn't. Peter didn't. And uh, at the back of your bulletin also you have this. But before that, that paragraph I have here only. Peter, James, John were uh, henceforth known as disciples of Jesus. Though they attend upon the preaching of Jesus and they were much in his society, they still pursued their humble catching. Their labor had been fruitless in the usual time for fishing, and there was no human probability of success now. In other words, there was too late. Usually they, they were, they were fishing early in the morning. It wasn't too late. It was no time to fish. I know how many people here, I know Brother Antoine, he knows any, something about fishing. And Sister Teresa, at least two people I know in this one. The best time is in the morning or early. That's what I've learned that. And uh, Peter, I believe he had that experience, said, no way, there is no way. But nevertheless, said Peter, at thy word I will do what you said. And it was done. An important and solemn work was before them. They were to give up their only means of support and spend their lives in unselfish effort to save uh, perishing sinners. But before he called them to this life of self-denial and dependence upon God, the loving God, Savior, showed them that as Lord of heaven and earth, 
he was abundantly uh, able to provide for all their wants. I love what the psalm says, and I, I believe in, in Psalm 45, taste and see how good is God. You have to try. You have to try. Try and test me. That's what God says. He's referring to himself. Isaiah 1.18, it says, Come and let us reason together. And also t- reading uh, about this event, they were unprepared to, lo- to handle so large drought. The sight of the miracles drought of fish swept away the unbelief of Galilean fishmen, fishermen. And they were ready to respond to Christ's invitation to follow him and to learn to be fishers of men. There are some events in our lives that really make, make a difference. Some, we lose some of our member, family member. We lose a job. We lose our health. We say, wow, I have to come and, and, and follow Jesus because there is no other way. And this, in, in life of these people, that was a case. There was a moment when they turned their life 180 degree and went different direction. They began to follow Jesus. My point is, why should you wait for something extraordinary happen in your life, some calamity, some losses, if you can start do it today and uh, start serving God? Because He wants our reasonable service today. Andrew was the one who spent time with Jesus and he learned of him. Unless you spend time with him, you would, you cannot learn. Why I have to commit my life to Jesus? First Corinthians 6.20 For he bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's, because he gave his life for me. What should motivate me to, de- to de- dedicate my life um, to Him? It's just nothing else but life of uh, love of Jesus. Like Andrew, who spent time with Jesus, went out and shared a good news. You can tell people about what you believe, and uh, dedication. Take uh, upper look page two thirty five. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Matthew eleven thirty um, eleven twenty nine eleven twenty nine. Matthew eleven twenty nine. My dear brothers and sisters, concluding this message for this morning, I would like to ask you a question. What did Jesus mean when he said, take your cross and follow me? It's in Matthew 16, 24, Mark 8, 34, or Luke 9, 23. All these three uh, epistles, they carry the same message. Many people interpret cross as some burden that's impossible things to carry. But in reality... Uh, when we read take up your cross and follow means being willing to die or do anything for uh, him, for Jesus. This is called dying for self. This is called absolute surrender. After each time Jesus commanded the cross bearing, he said, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? What is the point, my dear brother, if you would gain that vacation, if you will make that thousand couple thousand dollars if you'll get the new car and you lose your life see the problem is we see ourselves only in perspective of 20 30 40 years of our life we think that's the all what we have that's their own concept god says this is just a, a prerequisite or a 
transitional moment that once you pass this, I'll take you in eternity. I'll take you in eternity. It's hard for us to believe, although we kind of we want it because we don't want to die here to be burned in a lake of fire. But at the same time, something is holding us back. Continue reading. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and the holy angels. Although he call it stuff, the, the call is stuff, reward is matchless. The call is stuff. We have to admit, it's not that easy when you see all these surroundings going different directions. Truly, they were not able... Um, it's very important, uh, Luke chapter 9, I'll read Luke chapter 9, verse 22, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. His popularity sank when he said that. Not too many people were uh, following him after that because people wanted some excitement. This is exactly what we study in, in our Sabbath school. People want him to be to see him a king, a ruler, and take down the Romans. And when he said what he said, people left him. Many people. So, when, once you're gonna be presenting the truth, the the present truth, not too many people will be. Um, grasp you or follow following you following uh, jesus uh, it's easy when life is go run smoothly our true commitment to him is revealed during the trials jesus assured us the trials will come to his followers john 16 33 in this world you will have tribulation but be a good cheer i overcome the world he said that i did it and you can do it too. If you are ready to take up your cross, consider these questions. I'll give you several questions to consider in, in your heart. Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing some, losing some of your closest friends? Amen. Number two. Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means alienation from your family. Amen. I know some people are frustrated today because some of the members of the family went in the wrong direction. Completely obvious. We cannot do much about that. But we choose Jesus. Amen. And may God bless your heart for that. Number three. Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means the loss of your reputation? They say, you must be crazy. Give up such a career and such a job and go do low qualified job. <laughs> Number five, are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing your job? Amen. Follow me, Jesus. I'll make you fishers of men. They say, how would I do that? Are you willing to follow Jesus if it means losing your life? In Luke chapter 9, verses 57 through 62, there are three people who in these five verses denied Jesus. Let me briefly read it. And it came to pass that as they went in their way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man had not where to lay his head. And you know the name of that man. Verse 59. Luke chapter 9. And he said unto another. Follow me. But he said Lord. Suffer me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said unto him. Let the dead bury their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Verse 61. And another also said. Lord I will follow thee. But let me first go bid them farewell which are at home at my house and jesus said unto him no man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of, of god Amen. brother it's not my words 
is the word of Jesus. Commitment to Christ means taking up your cross daily, giving up your hopes, dreams, possessions, even your very life if needed to be for the cause of Christ. Only if you willingly take up your cross may you call his disciples. Only. Luke chapter 9, 14, 27, 14, 27 of Luke. And whosoever do it not, uh, does not bear the cross and come after me cannot be my disciples. The reward is worth the price. We say, oh, the tax price is too high. But the reward is greater. The reward is greater. For whosoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. Matthew 16, 25. My dear brethren, I'd like to finish with Joshua commitment. Joshua 24, 15. Yes, Joshua 24, 15. When he brought people of Israel up to that point, they were all, all already in the land of promise. They had everything, all the benefits. And he said, verse 15, Joshua 24. And if it seems, seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on another side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in the whole, in whose land he dwell. And the last phrase, remember, memorize it. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Can I have amen for that? Amen. 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 May God bless you.